Welcome today. I'm really excited to be joined by Bess Walden and David Winitsky. Um, Bess is a Maine-based playwright whose work explores the lived experience of the female body, amplifies marginalized voices, and engage the, engages the complicated, powerful, and often fraught love in relationships between mothers, daughters, grandmothers, granddaughters, and sisters. Her work examines the world through both a historical and contemporary Jewish lens, and Beth has been the recipient of a number of prizes and fellowships throughout her career. And last month, her one-act play, Madeline's, won the 2022 Jewish Playwriting Contest. Congratulations, Beth. Thank you. We're also joined by David Winitsky, Artistic Director of New York's Jewish Plays Project, which sponsors the annual Playwriting Contest to tell us more about that program. So again, Beth Mazel tov. this is an incredible achievement. Um, I know you've been doing this work for many years as part of a pretty vibrant performing arts scene in Maine. Um, can you share how you came to Maine originally? Oh, sure, yeah. I was just thinking about it because my family and I are just coming up on the, our 21st anniversary of moving to Maine um, from New York. And um, we came to Maine, I, it, it's always stuck, you know, like, like seared into my memory because it was three weeks before September 11th. So it was one of those moments where it was a, like, wow, like how did it somehow, you know, work in the universe that we were leaving New York just um, immediately before this event that kind of changed everything. Um, and of course felt um, really strange and disconnected um, from the whole life that we had left and we're suddenly um, here in Maine and trying to understand what this new landscape was going to be like um, for us and everybody else. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, coming up on 21 years and um, we came to Maine um, for a lot of reasons, but mostly because we were really looking for um, a community where we could raise our kids and send them to public school and um, live in a space where we could really um, get to know our neighbors and really get involved um, in all of the things that uh, being part of a small city um, would have to offer. And my initial introduction to Portland was actually um, not too much before that. I came up to work on a show at Portland Stage um, as an actor and um, a dialect coach um, for the world premiere of another Jewish play actually called uh, Manifest by David Silverman, um, which won the Clatter competition that year, which is a new plays contest that Portland Stage has been adjudicating for decades now. Um, and I came up um, to work on the play, to perform in the play, to help people with all of the varying dialects were, were, that were part of this play, um, which was um, a story basically about um, about the Holocaust, but like looking at the Holocaust from the perspective of a vaudeville. So it was really um, sort of a fascinating, um, <laughs> challenging play, um, which is always like what's great about having new plays um, come into the world and, and bring audiences new ideas and perspectives. So I was introduced to the Portland community through really Portland stage. Um, and really just a couple of years later, we decided to move here. Amazing. Um, how do you, if at all, how do you think being part of a smaller Jewish community has impacted your perspective and your work over the last 21 years? I think it's made an enormous impact. I, I often say this to people. I'm, I've gotten to that place now where like when new people move to town, I am often the person that someone will say like, hey, I know this other artist coming to town. Would you be willing to have coffee with them? Actually, David did that recently with someone um, I met and we had a, it was a great connection, great conversation. Um, so uh, what I what I found and what I say is that I feel like as an artist, I've been able to take risks and try things that I don't think I ever would have done if I would have stayed in New York or been in a larger city or a larger market. There's um, a lot of freedom and I feel like a lot less pressure in a lot of ways um, around making work, around making new work and, um, and just trying new stuff. So I think being in a smaller city has opened me up to um, trying, trying new things and taking bigger risks. When I, shortly after I arrived, um, I was the, hired as the artistic and um, executive director of the Maine Jewish Film Festival um, and ran the Jewish Film Festival for a number of years, which was something I never would have considered doing. Um, but it was an opportunity that kind of like came together. And because I'm someone with sort of a Jewish arts cultural background and also happened to be a pretty good project manager, um, it ended up to being a first like really great introduction to um, Maine's Jewish community. And I really got to know a lot of people really quickly um, through the film festival. 
It's great. There is this porousness to, and, and people just sort of develop like a Jack and Jill of all trades model where you just jump in and get involved. And there, there is something really exciting about that. Um, David, can you tell us more about the, the Jewish Plays Project itself, how it's structured and who's involved? Sure. Um, and uh, I, of course, want to say thank you to you, Molly, for having us and, and uh, another mazel to Bess for, for winning on her second time as a finalist with the, with the JPP. Amazing. It's been thrilling. Um, but uh, the JPP is a, a development house for what we like to call 21st century Jewish theater. We are looking to identify and develop and then advocate for new Jewish plays and musicals that speak to the best of contemporary Jewish culture. Um, the theater industry has a it certainly does a lot of Jewish stories, but often they're Holocaust stories, often they're sort of mid-century immigrant stories, those kind of things. And that's not who we are as a community anymore. There's so many interesting mm -hmm. things happening. And um, it is uh, what the thing that I realized when I started the company is like, it is not incumbent on other people to make sure that those stories get told. We have to make sure those stories get told. And um, and that uh, that was sort of the impulse uh, towards it. And, uh, and you know, Bess's play is a, a great example of a play that we were lucky enough to be able to uh, jump on board with early because we already had a relationship with Bess. Um, <clears throat> and I think is gonna have a really great future um, that we've been able to be involved with in, in, in terms of helping the play move forward to where it wants to be as a piece of art, but now moving into the phase uh, um, of advocating and telling people and telling producers and decision makers in the world, look, you should do this, you know, you should put this up because this is coming at, um, I, and both of the plays that we've, I've read of, of Bess's and other ones that I'm aware of, like come at the question of what contemporary Jewishness means in the world in a really fascinating uh, and, and sometimes unexpected way. Yeah, so I know we're, thank you. We're gonna share, um, uh, we'll be able to share some pieces of the play for people to get a sense of, um, of the play itself uh, separately. But I also, can you talk about what connected most with the reviewers about this play um, and yeah. kind of what we're interested in? Yeah, this was this play was uh, an instant and early favorite across the board. We have two phases of our work. Um, we have an artist panel review. We get about 250 plays submitted to us each year. Um, we have a group of about 70 artists that really dives deep into this pl these plays and really talks about, of course, what is good theater, but like, what is the where is the best Jewish content out there? And right from the beginning, people really responded, um, and I have to say, in, in particular, women responded. You know, they were like, this is a story about um, relationships among women in a family in all of its complexity and beauty and complication. Um, and um, and they really resonated with that. And they resonated with it specifically from a Jewish perspective, right? Like this felt like a Jewish family that they recognized. Um, and I think that was true when we brought it out to the next phase of our work, which is our community panel review. We uh, work in about nine cities. We have what we call theater chavaraz in each of those cities that reads all of our finals plays and chooses the ones that go forward. And that is a, there are some theater people in that, in those panels, but mostly it's just, you know, people who love Jewish culture. And they immediately jumped on and said, I know these people, I'm interested in these people and not to sort of give away something, but, but Bess also brings in sort of an unexpected um, or I shouldn't say unexpected, but less known part of some of the, the uh, some of the tail end of, of, of 20th century Jewish history in terms of its connection to Latin America. And that was, so it took this sort of story that people were familiar with and family that were people were familiar with, but then complicated it in this really, really interesting way that people loved. That's great. I, I noticed that you have these Havara in cities, not only in the United States, but also in Israel, is that right? Yeah, we have we have a partner uh, in Israel that we've been working with that we started working with because of the pandemic because we could right because we could reach out to them digitally and uh, and so we just did our third contest with them and as they get back to production in their theater um, I think they'll be putting some of our plays up soon. It just feels like such a great thing to have an opportunity to really shape and talk about what we're doing, thinking about Jewish identity and Jewish culture in this shared way. There's not always as much of an opportunity, I think, these days to make that happen. So that was really exciting. Yeah, and, and I gotta say, their take on art and culture and story is different than ours, right? Yeah. They come at it from a different perspective. They respond to different plays than we do. Their theater culture as a whole is much less realistic, much less sort of naturalistic than America's is. 
Um, so it's just that we get a, a very different POV when we work with them. That's, that's fantastic. Um, I, I wanted to ask both of you, we talk a lot at the JCA about balancing the universalistic and the particularistic elements of our tradition. And you know, this question of what makes something Jewish when we know that it, that can be a really expansive thing. So do you, we could both of you respond to this, um, this prompt about like what makes a play Jewish? Mm, best, please. Um, <laughs> Um, well, that's interesting because, you know, this was also a huge topic when I was working on the film festival too, you know, what makes a film Jewish, you know, actually what makes any artistic endeavor Jewish, is it enough that the creator is Jewish, is it enough that there happens to be a singular Jewish character, like, you know, what are the criteria, and I think that's, um, I hope will always be up for debate, you know, I think we'll, we'll all have differing opinions and different ideas about what that means, um, for me, I think all of my writing just comes from a Jewish place. Um, you know, my Jewish identity is just something that's always been hugely important and valuable to me. And I've um, explored it a lot. And I have a lot of complicated feelings about my own feelings about um, what it means to be a Jew in the world right now, what it means to be a Jew in the United States right now, even what it means to be a Jew, certainly in Portland and in Maine right now. You know, what are the, what are the challenges? What are the questions we need to be asking ourselves um, as our lives individually and as a community continue to evolve? How do we respond to these moments in the world? Um, so I think for me, um, even if for me personally, um, I feel like everything I write is Jewish, um, whether or not there's anything like overtly Jewish about it. Like there's always like some kernel of something. But for me, I think it's also um, just the way I look at the world. It's my lens. Like it's never not going to be Jewish from some for, in some way. Um, but I definitely have gravitated toward very specifically writing about um, people and characters who are very much Jewish, um, who have complicated relationships with their Jewish identities, um, how within families that are Jewish, that not everybody has their, the same relationship to their Jewishness. Um, and what does that do um, inside of a family and what are relationships to that? So, um, so for me, I think identifying as a Jewish artist um, is something that um, has evolved over time. Um, I was recently cleaning out my basement and found piles and piles of different files of, of all of the work that I've been making now for more years than I would like to claim. And, um, and I ran across this article that ran in the Jewish Week in New York um, about one of my very first um, forays into creating my own work. I made a solo play called Keeping the Word um, when I was a, a very young, fresh um, graduate school graduate coming to New York, collaborated with Annette Joless, who has actually been my director and dramaturg for the Madeleines project as well. So we've been knowing and working with each other for a very long time. Um, but it was, uh, I was talking about in this, in this interview with the Jewish Week about how, um, how it feels so important to me to be able to merge um, my Jewish identity and Jewish expression with theater, because theater feels very much like my mode of, of creative expression that feels like it's coming from a very organic and well, I don't know, a place that I need. I've always been a theater person since I was a tiny kid. I just, I am. Um, but I think for a little while in my mind, I thought being Jewish and being a theater artist didn't like go together, like that one would almost have to choose between the two. And then it was sort of in my early mid twenties that I um, woke up and realized that like, of course not. Um, there is something called being a Jewish artist. There is something called being a Jewish theater maker. Um, and I think that that has, um, that started pretty early in my career. And I've just continued to explore it in lots and lots of different ways um, in lots of modes inside theater making as, as a writer, as a performer, as a director, as a theater educator. Um, but I think as a, as a playwright, um, it's, a, it's a pretty big anchor to everything that I do. Yeah, it's it, it, it's, like this is the most common question I get asked, right? You know, having been doing this work for for you know as best as more years than I'd like to count. Um, but uh, uh, you know, what is a Jewish play? And on some level, that's the question: What is a Jew, right? Like it's a big, fat, yeah. massive question that there that ultimately there is no answer to. There's no one answer to that. Um, what 
I have realized, and I got in a lot of, not a hot water, but, but definitely people took exception. When I started the project, I came out and I said, this is what the JPP will accept. Um, we're not doing Holocaust plays. We're not doing uh, um, plays derived from the Yiddish canon. And we're not doing um, we're not doing the and the specific stereotypical comedy, right? You know, Jutopia or you know, my bubble minds are or whatever, right? We're not doing those things. And Frank London, of all people, the f fantastic trumpeter and and uh, trump a uh, trumpet player and composer, called me up and he said, "I got a bone to pick with you." And we we sat down and had a. Uh, lunch and he said you're saying what you're saying here is it has to be in english like that was also one of our things it has to be in english so right there you've eliminated most of the yiddish canon um and you're saying that it can, but you're also saying it can't be essentially schlock and he said i think you're saying no yiddish because no schlock right and because yiddish equals schlock and i was like you know what you're right you're that 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 is a little bit of, of, of what the perspective that I was coming from and I took that out um people still have issues with the no holocaust plays but you know my feeling is that I always say the body of holocaust dramatic literature is well developed and of high quality Dianu um but uh but um what has come in the JPP's work over time what we have gotten more clear about is for us we are not defining a Jewish play for anybody else but the Jewish plays that we are interested in are the plays where the Jewish question that is being asked is central enough to the play that it strengthens the dramatic question that's being asked, right? Mm -hmm. they, those two things go together, that you couldn't take the Jewishness out of the play. You couldn't suddenly name the play, name the character, you know, take the characters from Goldstein to, uh, you know, O'Connor, and all of a sudden the play is fine. That it's integral to what's, what's being asked. And as a development organization, as an organization that's working with playwrights to advance their plays and make them better, what we're looking for is the place where more deeply asking the Jewish question, right? We do, sometimes we do what we call Jewish dramaturgy. We'll bring clergy or thought leaders in the Jewish community in to talk about what's the Jewish of play, not what the dramatic structure or the characters, the dialogue, but what's the Jewish question. And what we are looking for is a play where doing that work will make the play theatrically better. I love this, David, because I feel like it also will make the, the, performances reflection of what Judaism is be that much deeper and more genuine but also like it's not going to rely on stereotypical frameworks that are really easy tropes but mm -hmm. don't go far enough to like explain what life is really like for the lived experience and I think that's been a that can be an issue um, with some material so that's that's that feels like an amazing framework to create how it have you found for the unexpected oh, sorry, right? no it also allows for the unexpected right the part yeah life that people don't know about right yeah they know the holocaust right like they know you know i'm, I'm sort of obsessed with dara horn's recent book uh people love it you know, fascinating it's book. but you yeah. know and I, and I was just in berlin and sort of thinking you know so a lot of that uh going on but yeah. um but you know it takes it, it allows for stories like i think the ones Bess is writing both madeline's and her earlier play that we got to work on refuge malja looking at elements of Jewishness that we don't, that aren't normally taught, that aren't, aren't often in the public eye. And I think that's really of interest to us. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's, I, 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 your plays often um, explore experiences and perspectives that just aren't often heard either in our own, in the Jewish community or in our society and culture more broadly. And I, I just wondered if you could talk about how it feels to shape and share those voices um, of your characters and stories because they're they are so usually not shared. Hmm. Wow. Great question. <laughs> um, I think that um, I think that there's for me always that combination of sort of like mining the individual experiences that I've had. Um, that might lead to the development of a character. You know, I mean, lots of people say this as a writer, like, you know, I'm showing up in all of these characters in some tiny way, right? In some way, shape or form. Um, and some aspect of my life or my family or whatever it is, my lived experiences are definitely showing up in the lives of these characters that I am quote unquote creating, right? That are coming from my imagination. I mean, I don't make like, you know, I don't make like docudramas and, you know, things like that. Um, 
but I was, and then I was thinking about that. Have I done that before? Not really. Um, so I think for me, it's, um, it's a lot about like, uh, allowing a story to unfold, getting a thread for an idea, and then really making space um, to sort of follow, like what the path for that, you know, where does, th where could this thread lead to, and where could that thread lead to, and then who are the other people that need to be in the world of this play in order to, you know, flesh out whatever the story is that I'm trying to tell, but I think it also comes with a huge responsibility um, to be making sure that I'm also collaborating with other people if I'm trying to represent a character or an identity that's really not mine, you know, that is really something very different from from my lived experience. So for example, David mentioned my play Refuge Malja, which was um, which was a finalist for the, the J Jewish Plays Project in 2020. Um, and it was, uh, it premiered at Portland Stage in the fall of 2018. And there are um, two characters in that story in that play who um who are of um from the middle east and and are not of jewish descent um they are most likely muslim and they are definitely arabic speakers um so i i have this thing i've been on this riff for a little while where i'm really interested in um and, and it's true for madeleines too i like writing plays that have languages other than english in them um, because I'm fascinated by how language works and what it does to an audience to hear something that feels unexpected or unfamiliar to us and how that opens us up potentially um, to step into a life or a life into the life of a character that we might never have the chance to meet or not spend a lot of time with. Um, so like, for example, with Refuge Malja, it felt really like essential that I was going to find um, a group of collaborators who were going to help me um, be true, be truthful as truthful as possible and authentic in my representation um, of these characters um, that I feel connected to and that came from my imagination, but certainly um, have not lived their experiences at all. So the play gave me the opportunity to reach out into the community and I made this really wonderful connection with um, somebody named Ali al Mashakil, um, who came on as a translator for the project and then a cultural broker for the entire production. And most importantly, like he's my friend now and our families meet and have meals together. And we're constantly wishing each other, you know, happy whatever it is, you know, um, Eid Mubarak. And he writes me and says, happy Passover. And, um, you know, so like I always say, if nothing else ever happens, like the fact that we have forged this personal relationship through the art making like I feel like that's that's half the, you know I don't know half or more of half the point um so when I'm trying to write about let's say quote marginalized people um I'm really using that as an opportunity one to do a ton of my own learning and unlearning and also using it as an opportunity to really reach out and make connections with other people in my community who can really help me understand to make sure that I'm representing these characters in the most um in the most respectful way that I can I I, I hope that answers your question yeah, no, that's great. I mean, have you, as you think about what it means to create more space for these voices, is is that like a, a, a thing that you start out of play and say, this is what I want to do? Or is it just sort of an, an organic outgrowth of yourself, yeah. your expression? Mm -hmm. I think there's a little bit of both. I think it kind of goes both ways. But often when I'm starting a story, um, I'm really just like in the, in that initial, like, Ooh, here's an idea. What if this person and this person were in a room together and then what would happen? Um, but I'm also intentional about it. I mean, David mentioned that Mad Lens was, you know, has been really um, well received by women. Um, it's, a, it's a play performed by three women, middle aged and older. Um, uh, that was purposeful. Um, there's this huge wealth of incredible acting talent out there, um, certainly that I'm aware of, and I'm sure far beyond, but certainly in the United States of women my age and older who um, struggle to find really challenging, juicy, fully developed characters to play. There's sort of this like dead zone um, of sort of like for, for middle-aged women, there's, it's a huge struggle. Um, and I could go on and on about why that's a problem. But, um, but, you know, there was, so it was very intentional. I was like, I'm going to write a play for all of these incredible actors, female identifying actors that I know who will just like, this will be, you know, this will be an incredible opportunity for them to showcase 
their talents, their abilities, you know, to have these characters to really, you know, really, really dive deep, dive deeply into because the characters require that. So I think I'm thinking about those sorts of things all the time. Who are the voices and bodies that we don't get to see on our stages because there's still such a narrow um, definition of sort of like who are who are the performers and that we're supposed to see, who are the stories that we're supposed to see. You know, to my knowledge, Portland Stage had never um, produced a play that had um, um, a, you know a, a, in, important key characters who were Arabic speaking characters who were actually speaking Arabic on stage um, and being able to see literally just see people from our own community um, there were a group of boys who shared the role of the younger character so like three different um, three different young people from our home community who had this opportunity to be involved in a play um, and in a professional production of a play and all of the things that they learned from that, but then their families were coming to see the show and they were starting to make, you know, connections in and around the theater community that just didn't exist before. So there's intentionality around like, um, who am I missing? Who do I feel like I don't get to see on stage? Whose stories am I not hearing? Um, there are lots of stories that are not my stories to tell. But what are the stories that I can tell in a respectful way that bring bodies, voices, shapes, and sizes onto our stage that um, that belong there, but but don't usually get a chance to be there? So I'm on a mission. I think it's fair to say I'm a little bit on a creative mission to make make those opportunities for other artists as well. It's really powerful. I, you know, we talk a lot about how much representation matters, and I think it's I you know I often think about it as a as a spectator. But, but thinking through the implications for, for the acting field, for people who get involved and, and again, their families, their community, like that's, that's a really amazing thing. Um, David, oh, sorry, go ahead. I'm gonna follow up on that because I think plays like, like Bess's, they also give us an opportunity to think about Jewishness in community with and in relation to other communities. Like I think, and which is so, uh, so critical, right? You know, we don't develop as individuals or as a community in 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 vacuums. We are a tiny minority. We always have been. Therefore, everything we do is in nego is negotiated in community. And so, you're not actually understanding Jewishness if you're not understanding the other people who are around you. Yeah, that's an amazing that's amazing concept. Um, you mentioned, David, that there's a way in which um, the play project sort of stewards and supports the development of plays. Can you talk about how that works too? Yeah, I mean, basically, uh, 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 that's talking about readings and workshops that we do uh, mostly in New York, um, uh, which are twofold. Everything we're doing is, is, is twofold where we're saying like, we wanna get together with artists and say, okay, how does your play need to go forward? And it depends on where it is, right? Um, uh, we have plays that are very early in their development and people are, you know, um, we had another play that was one of our, our, our top three finalists this year that literally is the first draft of the play. Like, you know, he finished it and sent it off to us, right? And, and that's great. And, you know, and then there's things that need to be done and work that needs to be done with the artist. And so we're giving them opportunities to hear the play, um, to go, oh, this is the change I want to make. This is a change I want to make. Um, that have to do with clarifying uh, what is it that you're actually after, um, looking at dramatic structure and what is actually landing, you know, is there something I'm trying to say that an audience is not already, that is not getting from my play? Um, um, and then the other part of the development is about showing it to people who might take it forward, right? Um, we're doing readings in New York. And when we're doing a reading of a play in New York, I always say, I want to have a third of the audience be people in the JPP community who are excited about our work. A third of the audience be, um, uh, uh, general, uh, you know, uh, just people who love the theater, and a third of the audience be industry people who are looking at plays that they want to take to production and make happen in their communities. And so it's always that 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 dual idea of how do we make sure we are getting to the decision makers that can take this forward. It's really exciting, and it sounds like also really going to foster as it goes on. This is the eleventh year, right? But like building great. over time this great cohort of folks. Yeah, and I and I, again, this is one you know you got to look for the silver linings. Like I think this is something about the pandemic that has really helped. Um, we've always been a national organization; people are all over the place, and now 
uh, it's not that we couldn't have connected digitally before. It's just we didn't. You know, we, it wasn't part of the practice. And now I feel like I think this year may have been our best year that way. Like I really felt like the seven playwrights that we had highlighted really got to know each other and and um, and know each other's work and be involved in each other's process. And one thing I can say for certain is that you know the Jewish geography of that, like just the informal connections that people make, it helps us advance the work, right? Like, and that's that's exactly. including community members in the cities that we visit. They may have no, they, they may just be theater lovers, but then they'll tell somebody, no, the next time they're at their local theater, they'll say, oh, I was on this panel and I read this play and it leads to opportunities for artists, which is really, really fantastic, which, you know, actually uh, brings me to, you know, I want to put you on the spot, Molly, and say, like, we need to get the main Jewish playwriting contest started. That's I know, what we right? Well, you know, I, it's funny, Beth, you may know more about this than, than I do, actually, but for many years, the Portland JCC, it, I think from like in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and even 70s, um, there was a really robust community theater program um, at the JCC and with adults and kids and, and all kinds of, you know, very large productions in many cases. Um, and in recent years, we've worked to collaborate with Portland Stage and other um, other local different groups to, to bring uh, plays forward. But I think this idea of playwriting and, and working within, there's a pretty robust network of, um, of artists in Maine. Um, so it would be great to think about like how the film festival could be involved or additional conversations to happen. And I'm, I'm really excited for community members to be able to hear more about your work best um, in particular. Where can they go? I understand you're working on something related to The Little Mermaid and an updating of that story, which as someone with twin 10-year-olds, I'm very excited about hearing more around. But, um, but where can people learn more about what you're doing and where they can see um, your work? I think the best place is just to get on the internet and go to my website, bestweldon.com. Right. It's really um, pretty simple. I think it's definitely the only one out there. Um, uh, and I really use that website as a as sort of a portfolio of my work. So it's really, you know, it's it's projects past, it's projects that are currently happening. Um, I don't think there's anything on there that's too too much um, dreaming into the future, um, mostly things that are active right now. Um, but my website has a lot of information about um, projects that I have that are out in the world that, you know, folks can ask for licensing rights and they can produce. Um, I, wrote a, I wrote a play a number of years ago called Magic in the Attic, which is actually um, a, a collection of um, adaptations of Eastern European Yiddish folk tales, um, but it's it's all anchored um, in this family, family of, um, it's really about two kids who are sent to clean out their grandmother's attic, um, and they discover this old notebook, and their great-great-grandmother um, comes back as a spirit and guides them um, through this sort of Yiddish learning um, adventure through stories that are recognizable to us because they're sort of like the Yiddish versions of all kinds of folk tales that, of course, have come down to us, we think, from other traditions, but actually they're Yiddish versions mm. of all of the stories too. So that actually is my most produced play. Um, and it's been done um, lots of different places, um, both in the Jewish community, like in a Jewish community center context, but it's also been recently produced by a couple of different high schools around the country. Um, and so that play exists and it's out there. And I have a few other plays that have already um, been, you know, had productions. And so if people are interested in like, oh, what, what else does Bess have we might want to bring to our community? Maybe it's not this play, but maybe it's something else. So um, that's really the website is the best place um, for people for people to get a, a sampling. There's some video of things um, from my solo works and some of my other projects as well. So people can tap into a bunch of different different things on the website. And the play that you're you're referring to is um, my my play with songs Mer Girl Saves the Waves, which is a feminist environmentalist adaptation of The Little Mermaid. Um, and uh, was just doing, um, have been doing some developmental work on that play with a company of girls, um, which is a local oh, great. organization. Yeah. And um, have been having some conversations with some other folks about how maybe to bring that play to uh, to full production. It's had some Zoom readings and it's had a few other things going on. But hopefully now that we're um, back in business, as it were, at least a little bit more, um, maybe we'll have a chance to um, to have that here um, happening here in, in in the Portland community and get a bunch of local kids involved, which would be great. That sounds like a really timely thing. I think, yeah, yes. I'm sure there'll be lots of very interested families and, and kids. 
Um, David, for folks who want to follow JPP and learn more, is the website the best place for them to go to? Yeah, absolutely. JewishPlaysProject.org is, is JewishPlaysProject.org is our website, and you can check us out there. And, um, uh, you know, there's lots of opportunities for people to get involved, for artists to get involved, certainly to submit plays. That's always uh, important. We're always accepting new scripts. Uh, but also other artists who are interested in reading with us, our artist panel process is really fascinating. Um, and I think people find it really activating to their own Jewish identity to put their professional hat on in a Jewish context and ask those questions uh, is really great. So uh, actors and directors and dramaturgs and other playwrights who, who want to read with us, we are currently uh, reading right now for our 12th cycle. Um, and there's some really exciting work in there. Um, you know, it's interesting to watch how playwriting changes over time and content changes over time. And we're just starting to see, you know, there's always a bit of delay. Things happen in the world and then it takes a year or so for people to write the play. Um, uh, we're just starting to see people uh, respond to and grapple with some of the things that are happening in the world and in our, in our country uh, around contemporary anti-Semitism and some of those issues. Um, so there's lots of juicy stuff for people to dig into. Um, uh, but also for communities to say, hey, we want to look, we want another way or a, a, a different uh, cultural way to engage with Jewish ideas. Um, the contest is one format and there's other programs that we have that can come to an individual synagogue or uh, really any chavara of 10 or more Jews who wants to have us, but but to any organization that wants to, um, wants to bring us in to say, hey, let's look into what artists are creating and think about what resonates with us. And that's, that's sort of the basis of our work and you can get that information all on the website. Awesome. That's is exciting. It's really something to think about if we can build like a theater minion, theater havara. I love it. Um, I want to thank both of you so much for this conversation and really looking forward to continuing it into the future. Wonderful. Great Thanks so much, Molly. Thank Thanks you, Molly. You. So appreciate it. Great to see you, David. As Always. Hope I can see you in, in the future in person at some point, Beth. Would be really great. <laughs> Let's make it happen. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Have a great day. We hope you enjoyed listening to this episode of J Talks. If you have any questions or comments, please visit our Facebook page at Main Jewish or visit us at MainJewish.org. J Talks is produced by Molly Kern Rolls and edited by Trevor Geiger for the Jewish Community Alliance of Southern Maine. Our theme music is by Sarah Howie Richardson. We'll be back with more episodes soon. <laughs>